Next we're going to look at our A star uh, class within our uh, project. If you remember, Pathfinder is declared in our main, and that's an A star object. And the first thing we do, or the main thing we do, is call this routine calculate shortest path. So an A star. This is our routine. We have two lists of nodes here: a array list of explored uh, nodes and a frontier list. And we're going to implement basically the algorithm that's covered in the Stanford lecture in this Calculate Shortest Path. So let's just look quickly at that. So this is the basic algorithm, the graph search algorithm that returns a path. It initializes these two lists, the frontier and the explored list. The frontier is initialized as an initial state where we're starting, the start node, and the other one is empty. So here we go, we go the explored node is cleared and the frontier is cleared. So both of them are cleared, no nodes. And then we add to the frontier list, we add the start node from the map. So will be set the explored list will be empty and the frontier list will just have a single node in it and that will be our start node um, and then we'll do this loop while frontier is not empty and we'll grab uh, the current node from or grab some node from the frontier and we'll talk about how that is what what that'll be at different times and uh, in the Stanford thing they call it the test path we're going to call it the current node because we're just really keeping track of the node and not the whole path in our software uh, so let me make this bigger okay so while the frontier list is not empty that's what we said and then again we're going to uh, declare a node and we're just going to grab the top element from the frontier list. We're just going to get element 0 from the frontier list and we're calling that current. Um, so that's rather than test path it's called current. Uh, we're going to add that to the explored list and also remove it, make sure we remove it from the frontier. Um, so that's what we do here. We remove the current from the frontier list and we add it to our explored list. Uh, then we also test if we've reached our goal. Um, here in their routine, they actually are grabbing is this the end of the path and testing that for the goal. Since we're keeping track of nodes, not paths, we're just going to test if it's at our goal. Uh, and if so, we're going to return it. So here's if the current is our goal, if we've reached our destination, then we just print something out. And then we reconstruct the path from the current node and return that path that we return. Um, okay, so then um, we are going to loop through each action uh, that we can do. Uh, with this node. So we've got this node from the frontier and then we're going to go through and in our case the different actions are its neighbors. We can go to any of our neighbors. So we're going to loop through its neighbors. So here's our loop for each of the neighbors. We're going to grab the neighbor uh, and then we'll say checking out neighbor and then we're going to do something with that neighbor. Um, we're going to check if it's already on the explored list and if so, we're just going to uh, skip over it. If we've already explored there, then we're done. Um, and then we're going to calculate a distance here. And again, this is what this is largely the uh, for each action uh, that's not in the explored list. Uh, we're going to calculate uh, and put on the frontier the current uh, value plus the result of this action. And so we're going to have to calculate a new distance. So for us, that's going to be uh, if we're at one node and go to a neighboring node, what's that new distance we are going to want to travel? So we're going to take the current, the distance from the start to the current node plus this neighbor's distance. What does that correspond to? Well, let's say we're at node 3 here, and we're going to be going on to node 7. Uh, so we started with node 1 and we went up to node 3 sorry about that, we went up to node 3 and then we're going to go on to node 7 so 3 is our current node and we know the distance to that we've calculated that already is our work and now we're doing our neighbor um, so we're going to take the distance to our current node 3 
which here would be 0 0.9, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.4, plus the distance to the neighbor's noid, 1.4. So we end up with 2.3 as the distance to this neighbor. So every time we step to a neighbor, we will up to figure out the distance from the start to that neighbor by using the distance uh, from the current node plus this distance that we look up on the map. So that's what all this is. It's just getting the current distance from the start for the current node, which was 3, and adding the distance to that neighbor, neighbor uh, node 7. And then we're going to do some checks once we have that. So we're going to check if uh, Frontier List con uh, contains this neighbor. Uh, and if not, see the little not there, if it's not already on the Frontier List, we're going to add that neighbor to the Frontier List. So we're just going to say Frontier List add neighbor. Uh, we're going to set the previous node so we can che keep track of how we got there. So the previous node is just going to be set to the current node. And then we're going to set the distance to start to be this distance we calculated up here. Uh, for now, we're also going to keep track of a total distance, uh, and that'll just be the distance from start for now. So when we run this, uh, we'll get our path. Let's look a little bit at how that path works. Um, and so in the next video, we'll go through and track this path and how it works.